Welcome to the Gropius House. My name is Peter Gittleman and I'm the team leader for the visitor experience at Historic New England. This house was built by Walter Gropius for his family, his wife Isa and 12-year-old daughter Adi. And before that, Walter Gropius founded the Bauhaus, which was a school in Germany that really changed the way that design was seen around the world. The Bauhaus literally meant the house of building. So by taking Bauhaus aesthetic and applying it to the New England landscape, he created something that he never would have created in Germany and had never been seen before here in New England. So what makes a New England home? Well, according to Gropius, a German architect, a New England home was white and it was made out of wood. Gropius firmly believed that the modern New England home had to reflect modernity. So he used things like glass blocks, which was uh, not available to colonial New Englanders, but was available to modern New Englanders. He was trying to prove that you could build a modern New England house using materials that were available to modern New Englanders. And that revolutionary character continues inside the house. Right when you walk into the hallway, you find that this is, in fact, a New England traditional hallway with a staircase and a door at the front and a door at the back. But what Gropius did that's so unusual is that he used new materials like chrome balusters and old materials like clapboards on the inside of the house instead of where you traditionally find them on the outside of the house. Another way that Gropius was able to soften this space was to add fixtures like these sconces that you see on the wall. And they created beautiful uplighting and also were able to cast shadows on these vertical clapboards. So the first room you come into off of the front hallway is the study and the light above provided a perfect glass passageway into the living room. The glass block wall is particularly important. Glass blocks have been used in industry for years, but never before to divide two spaces, a dining room and a study. And the beauty of it is that it gives light from both sides. The desk is one of the most important pieces of furniture in the house. What Gropius had asked for is a space equal for himself and for his wife. Gropius was in partnership with his wife. He didn't expect her to be a homemaker. He expected her to be part of the modern movement and Bauhaus spirit. So in the living room, you notice that all of these large windows are facing privacy. The windows in this house were much larger than anybody had ever seen before in New England, but they were all commercially available. Many of the furnishings in this room, and in fact in the entire house, were designed by Marcel Breuer. He was the one who revolutionized the use of tubular steel to create lightweight, movable furniture. It was all inspired by his bicycle. And in Isagropius' later years, she spent her afternoon sitting here baking in the western sun. Because the Gropiuses had friends from all over the world who were artists, they were constantly getting new pieces of art in the house. And so the piece over the fireplace, which was done by their very dear friend Laszlo Maholinaj, was a gift to them from his widow Sybil. The dining room is actually one of the smallest rooms in the house, but the house itself is actually pretty tiny. It's only 2,100 square feet, so really the size of a large apartment. Another benefit of smaller spaces is intimacy, and the dining room is the perfect example of that. If you look at the dining room table, you see it really was only possibly able to fit about six people. But for the most part, it was just the family or close, intimate friends, because for them, it was all about the conversation. Right off the dining room is the pantry and the kitchen, and both of these were the domain of the maid. Although it's unusual to think of a small house having a maid, before World War II, virtually every middle-class house had a maid. There are three bedrooms on the second floor of the house. The one we're in right now is the one that was originally lived in by their 12-year-old daughter, Adi. When she arrived here, she was given a choice of which desk she'd like to have, and she chose this one, which is a desk that Gropius, her father, had designed and built for his original office at the Weimar Bauhaus. So although there's great pieces of art in this room and there's interesting pieces of furniture, what makes this room really special is the access to the porch, which the spiral staircase from the outside on the front comes right up to. The idea is that Gropius felt that he wanted his daughter to have some independence, so they gave her her own private entrance. Yeah. 
The Grobius's bedroom is actually three spaces. Right now we're in the dressing room. On the other side of this glass wall is the sleeping area, and then behind is the bathroom. One of the things that makes this room so special is that it has a glass wall with a floating mirror in it, which provides light through as well as the uninterrupted wall of windows from almost everywhere. One of the reasons that this room and this entire house looks so accurate is because we had the help of Gropius's 12-year-old daughter after she was in her 60s. For the last 25 years of her life, she worked with Historic New England to help us put every single detail in its right location. And because of that, when visitors come to the house, they feel like the Gropiuses are still at home. Walter Gropius always said that this is a house unlike any he would have built in Germany, a completely new example of modern New England architecture. If you're interested in learning more about the Gropiuses, come visit us at the Gropius House in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Can't get enough of these breathtaking homes? Hit that subscribe button for more open house coming your way.